good evening. I'll be in view in just a second. A little furball decided she wanted to get out instead of staying in here with me. Well, I hope everybody's had a very blessed day. I tell you what, it has been a beautiful day outside. A little bit breezy, but boy, I sure do enjoy them 50, close to 60 degree weather. And again, I hope everybody's had a very blessed week. And we're going into more about the anointing. And, you know, uh, it's like, how many of y'all get in your car? You put your key in, or either you push a button, and it starts up, and you drive it. You put gas in it, or... If it's a high, uh, you know, if it's uh, all electric, you'll plug it in and it gets power. You see the outside features and the inside of the interior, but you don't see the working of the motor or the generator as they make the vehicle to produce speed, to go forward, to go reverse. You don't see those things much. And that's like with the anointing and, and referring to the Holy Spirit that is inside of us. We don't always see what's going on inside. But he's in there. And, and that's where tonight, as we go into part five of the anointing, uh, you know, I was, again, I want to start off by saying, uh, if what you're being taught isn't in the Bible, then don't listen. Because the Bible, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit bear witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, if you've got your Bible, I want you to turn to 1 John chapter uh, 5. We'll look at some verses there because if it's not in there, then what are you listening to? And that's why sometimes I've been known to use a, a whole lot of scripture. But it's the word of God. Now I may give some uh, different uh, hypotheses or uh, something that has went on that I've experienced myself or I read about other people and uh, and so you know it bears witness now if you with me in first John chapter 5 let's start with verse 6 and we're going to read verse 6 through 8 this is he that came by water and blood even Jesus Christ not by water only but by water and blood, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. In other words, that's the Trinity. You do have, you got God the Father, you got God the Son, you got God the Holy Spirit. And even though they're three different individuals, they're still one in unity. In verse 8, And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. In other words, uh, Jesus, as he told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he can, no, uh, can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. In other words, the only way we can be born again is by the blood of Jesus Christ. The water baptism is the, the outward expression of what happened on the inside of us. The cleansing that took place on the inside. And then the Holy Spirit that is inside of us helps us to walk with God 
and accomplish the things that God has for us. That's what concerns me a lot today because a lot of times uh, turn on the TV and you see people sitting in the auditorium of the facility and a lot of times they'll post up scripture on big screens up at the front where the minister is ministering. But you, you don't see people taking notes. You don't see them carrying a Bible. And yeah, I know that if you can take your, your uh, cell phone and you can pull up the Bible and you can follow it with uh, all different translations. But there's nothing like having the Bible in your hand where you can read it word for word and having a notebook to where you can take notes. Now, I had rather see everyone taking notes in the church than just hear it. Because when they're taking notes, there may be something that you question. And if you question, you don't have an understanding, and you leave without that understanding, then what good does it do you? That's why when you're taking notes, you can say, Hey, Pastor, I've got a question about something that you uh, spoke of during the message. Uh, could you explain that to me? And I'll take time to explain to him. Just like with doing this on Facebook or YouTube. All you have to do is message me or give me a call. And I will go over with you and show you in the Word what I'm coming from. And if I have made a mistake, I will apologize and repent of it because I do not want to mislead anybody. I don't want nobody's blood on my hands when I stand before the Lord for not teaching the Word the way God wants it taught. And uh, and like I said, that's what concerns me. Like, and it's sort of like, you know, uh, you can put, you can have a good bushel of apples, but stick a rotten one in the middle of it and see what happens within a few days. They'll all start rotten. That's close to it. First one, then another, and then another, and then another, and then another. That's why it's so important that we have one is the discerning of the Spirit, is knowing to hear the Holy Spirit, knowing when what we're hearing and reading. That's why I read this word. That's why I try to give everybody time to get turned to it so that you can read the word that I'm reading. And yeah, I use King James. I've got all different flavors. I've got the uh, New Century Version. I've got the NIV, and I've got the uh, New King James Version, and uh, I've got the New English Version, and uh, uh, the NIV, and let's see, um, the Amplified. And Lord, I can't tell you all the Greek, and so... Uh, you, the King James is the complete one because it, the way it was wrote, God made certain that everything we needed to be able to live the way he wants us to do and to know him and to know what we have is through the King James Bible. Now, uh, Go to St. John chapter 8. And I know that she's saying, well, how is this relating? And I and tomorrow night will be the same way. Because till you know what you have inside of you, how can you know how to apply what you have? That's just like 
when first time I got a computer over at the church and uh, uh, Tony Burnett, he was helping me get set up and everything. And I am still computer Ill illiterate uh, in a lot of ways. And I was doing our bulletins and everything and uh, using, uh, you know, uh, different designs and all that. And one day it popped up, do I want to remove the thumbnails? I'm like, might as well, don't need no thumbnails. And it didn't cross my mind. I had no idea. And I lost it. Lost everything. And Tony said, it's in there. But he never could, he never could locate it again. So I learned that you don't do certain things unless you know. And the only way to learn is through experience, through your trials, through your testing. In St. John chapter 8, verse 32. Well, let's get verse 31 too. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him, believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, when I say read that like it, the truth shall make you free, then it is a process. It's not just something that just, boom, just happens just like it, you know. It's a process of learning, and what you learn, then you can believe. Uh, how often have you heard something or, or thought, well, I just can't accept that. I just don't believe that. I just don't think it happens like it. You know, if you've been born again, have you ever had a day when you thought, it's like the devil was speaking, well, you're not saved. If you saved, you wouldn't be acting like that, or you wouldn't have an attitude like that, or you wouldn't have a temper like that, or you wouldn't have said like that, or you wouldn't have done like that. And... Uh, and it makes it real hard then because we think, because the enemy comes to call, condemn us. But the Word of God says, Now there is now therefore no condemnation in those that are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8. And uh, our minds will cause us to struggle with the Word of God because of what we have been taught by what we have seen in others, Christians, and what so-and-so may have said. And it causes doubt and unbelief will set in. And we'll wrestle with the Word of God. In the Holy Spirit. Um, let's look at another verse of Scripture. I've got mine printed out, but you go to it. It's 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. And we was in 1 John chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Now here I'm going to give you the chapter before. 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, little children. And you have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, when you read that, and it says you're of God, 
little children, comma, and have overcome them, and it's got colon. It's got your two little dots. And when you see those colons, know that what is coming next is a whole lot has a whole lot stronger meaning than what you just read. So let's put it in this, because greater. You overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And John is talking about the Holy Spirit that is within you. Can you see it? Mm -mm. Nope, I can't. I've never seen the Holy Spirit, but I can tell you what, he made a change in my life, and it didn't take long to start doing it. Go to Colossians chapter 1. Ah, I have to give me a laptop or a table to put here in front of me. Colossians chapter 1. And let's read verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. Now what does Christ mean? Christ means the anointed one. So the Christ in us what Paul is telling the Colossians is that, that God has given us the anointed one, the anointing of the anointed one, in us the hope of glory. Because when we understand what we have inside of us, then everything that we do will give God glory. It'll reflect the the glory of the Son, Jesus Christ, it will reflect the glory of God the Father. It will reflect the glory of the Holy Spirit that is inside of us in operation. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Have you do a little bit of Bible research tonight. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let's read verse 16. Know you not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now Paul was telling the Corinthians just as if he was speaking to us today, and he puts it in a question form. Know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Do you realize that? Because till you do, you will try to do everything according to your flesh instead of according to the Spirit of God that works within you. Flip over to the 6th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verse 19. What? Question mark. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you not are not your own? Now, Paul took it to another level from chapter 3 to chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians. Because in the 6th chapter, he's very uh, plain in saying that the Holy Ghost, your, temp your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost which you have of God. In other words, God give it to you. When you got born again, God give you that Holy Ghost in you. And we're not our own. In other words, 
As Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. In other words, he said, you know what? I'm living for the Lord now. That's why it didn't matter where he had or he didn't have. He said, I'm content because I'm running the race. I fought the good fight of faith. I've kept the course. Because he knew how to be led by the Spirit of God. John and Paul both were trying to tell us to this very day to get us to understand what is inside of us. That if we take time to learn and to listen to the Holy Spirit inside of us. You know, it's one thing if somebody comes up behind you and shakes you or grabs you and says, hey, this is what you need to do. But the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And he, he's not going to overpower your will. You have to be willing to listen to him. And he's that still, small voice that we have to fine-tune our hearing. That made me think, and I, I don't hear nothing out of my left ear. I haven't since I was five-year-old. Uh, and I struggle with hearing in my right ear. But I remember when probably about two or three years after we had turned to the Lord, it would have been probably 92, 93, uh, somewhere along there, uh, Benny Hinn was having a, uh, a crusade down in Charlotte. In our home church, uh, we had a big old school bus and and a lot of people wanted to go, so we we loaded up that bus, and Pastor Sam, he gave his blessing, and and we went down there, and we were back up in the, the, the stands. We weren't on the lower level. We were actually probably about the third level up, and down at the very bottom, they had the sick people. And they had the people that were handicapped and in wheelchairs. And then they had the people that couldn't hear. They had an interpreter. And I remember sitting there and I saying, Lord, it would be wonderful for them to receive their hearing. And he said something that it broke my heart, but it got my attention too. He said, why? Well, that got my attention. And then what he said next broke my heart. He said, they hear me better than you do. Why? Because they couldn't hear what we hear. They're not distracted by all the noises around us. And so the only voice that they actually hear would be the Holy Spirit that is inside of them. And when I thought about that, God, he, it just gave a, a new revelation on, on that. And because uh, we think, you know, because we can hear we're more blessed when actually we're not. When it comes to hearing because a deaf person can hear the Spirit of God. We hear everything that pulls us away from God. So anyway, that was a learning experience for me. And, uh, you know, I'm going to give you something to think about. Because uh, the Holy Spirit... In St. John, chapter 14, 15, 16, uh, Jesus talked about that God would send the Comforter. The Comforter is to 
comfort us, to help us, to teach us, to instruct us, which we read back in 1 John chapter 2 uh, last week. And uh, also, uh, you know, heal us, guide us, comfort us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, why don't you go there? And this is what happens sometimes when people uh, aren't relying on the Holy Spirit and they make unwise decisions. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Verse 14 through 16. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now, as I was looking at that, those verses last night, I will break it down into ten different things. Number one, a believer is called a believer because they believe the Word of God. The unbeliever is called an unbeliever because they don't believe the Word of God. They do what they want, when they want, how they want, and don't consider nothing else. A believer is called righteousness. What does righteousness mean? Righteousness in the Bible means Right standing with God. So a believer is going to be in right standing with God. The other words are going to do what God calls them to do and ask them to do. The unbeliever is called unrighteousness. And unrighteousness means you are not in right standing with God. You're just opposite of being where you need to be. The believer is called light. The unbeliever is called darkness. The believer is called Christ or the anointed of the anointed one. The unbeliever is called Belial or Satan. That's the other term for Belial. The believer is called the temple of God. The unbeliever is called idols because other things take their attention away from God. And, uh, and I mean, it can be a lot of things. Satan will use, he, he will, he's got tactics that most people don't even understand. And I mean, God can use, or, or Satan will use a sickness. If he can get you to be sick on, uh, day of service and you don't go then the following time that it's time for service you'll be sick again and it'll become routine next thing you know you're not even going to church he can use your children he can use your grandchildren he can use your work he can use programs on TV I remember as uh, as a Sunday school teacher at our home church uh, one one of the young boys, and and that class was the, the six to ten in, at our old church on uh, off the old Fairview Road, not the new church, and uh, uh, Meta Creek Road, and. Right after 
we were getting ready to close our Sunday school class, and Isaiah Bed saw and me. We worked together a whole lot, and uh, uh, in teaching the kids. And one of the young boys, seven or eight year old at the time, he says, "I hate this time of year." And I said, "Well, why?" He said, because I want to be in church and my daddy wants to go home so he can be there in time to watch a football game come on at 12 o'clock. That broke my heart. Because his daddy was supposed to be a minister. And, uh, you know, uh, to see children won't be in church but they're denied the ability to go to church to learn about Jesus to learn about God because the adult the parent has a wrong set of priorities and uh, uh, I'm not going to say any more about that because there was a bad outcome. Uh, thank God for the young man, and as far as I know, uh, he's doing great. And uh, I think by now he's probably graduated from Christian college. Uh, but when we come to terms that greater is he that's in me, that's in your body and you're the house of the Holy Spirit of the anointed one you really get excited because let me ask you this when you study the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John all that came to Jesus looking and expecting healing, got healed. He tried to do, he tried to heal people in his hometown, and he could do mighty little works because of their unbelief. You see, there is a personal anointing that each one of God's people, and as an individual, the anointing is inside of us, waiting on us to take advantage of his presence, of his power, of his provision, of other words, grace. You know, Paul said we're saved by grace, not by works, at least we boast. Well, grace is three things, God's presence, God's power, and God's provision. Whatever you have need of, it's there. God's power is there. God's presence is there. It's inside it. The grace to run the race that is set before us. Everything that you need is inside of you. Everything you need to heal you is inside of you. Hey, I take blood pressure medicine. Why? Because I don't eat as healthy as I need to eat. I don't exercise the way I need to. I'm not taking care of my body the way I should have many, 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 many years ago. And so I struggle. And it's like when I started losing the hearing in my right ear. I said, Lord, ooh, Lord, you're my healer. Not only do I want you to heal this ear, this ear has been dead for 57 years. I want to hear out of it. And every day when I take a shower and I towel my ears dry, I expect this one to hear the same thing as this one does when I stick the towel in. You've got to believe. I don't want to get in too much on that because then I'll be messing with our 
tomorrow night's message. One last question before I close tonight. When you take a drink of water out of a glass or a bottle, we know that it goes down in that. But do you see the water, the fluid going into your body? Now, if it's extremely cold water, ice water, and you're hot, or you've been uh, outside working or exercising or whatever you may have been doing, you can feel the coldness going down your throat to your stomach. You feel it, but you can't see it. You can't see how the water is distributed in your body, how it flushes out different sodium and different minerals. You drink enough, and sooner or later you got to go to the bathroom, you got to pee. You don't see how that works. You just know it does. Have you ever had a moment when, I call it a God moment, when you're reading the Word or you're hearing a message or maybe speaking to somebody about God and how the hair will just stand up on your arms, one of those Holy Ghost moments? Well, I don't know how many realize it or not, but there is scripture for that. In the book of Job, chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, Job said, Then a spirit passed before my face, and the hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before my eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, and then God spoke to him. See, the Spirit of God went before Job. Old Testament, New Testament, where's the Holy Spirit at? Inside of us. And we can still have that hair-raising moment when the power of God is just rushing through your veins. I've had it when I've been ministering. I've had it when I've been praying for people. I can feel the presence of God inside of me, not on the outside, but on the inside of me. And the presence of God is the anointing of God raising up inside of me. So, but that said, I'm going to stop here. Tomorrow night, we'll do part six of the anointing. I'm going to put this on, or on YouTube. And, uh, and for those that are going through some type of issues, whether it be health, finances, relationship, Find yourself looking forward and expecting the Holy Spirit of God to instruct you. That is why God placed him inside of the believers, is to heal, to help, to deliver, to instruct, whatever we have need of. That's why Jesus said he is the comfort. And uh, like I say, I give you, I try to give you scripture. I could give you a whole lot more scripture. We could probably go for hours on this subject each night and still not get it all in. So I try to give you just enough to whet your appetite to get you thinking. Because if you get a thinking up here of what you got in here, and if you will let him rise up inside of you, you're going to be set free. You're going to be recover faster, heal faster. 
finance, whatever it is you have need of, God is going to move. We'll get into that tomorrow night. And as always, if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, today's a good day to ask Jesus into your heart. If you've backslid on God, today's a good day to say, Lord, forgive me. I want to get back in right standing. I want to be in the righteousness that the believer is supposed to be. And if you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, and you turn to God, your life is going to do a 360. Not a 360, but a 180, because you won't be going back to the very point that you started. You're going to be going in the opposite direction of where you were. So, let's just pray a simple prayer. Father God, we just come to you right now in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I just ask that, Lord, if there be any that doesn't know you, or if they've strayed from you, Lord God, right now, that they will ask for forgiveness. And Lord, for you just fill them with your precious Holy Spirit, that anointing inside of them, so that they can walk and the way that you want them to, to do the things that you want them to, that you've appointed for them to do. And Father God, I just thank you, and Lord, all the people on our prayer list. And it, it grows continually. And Lord, we thank you that by your stripes we're healed. Whatever needs is, today is the day of salvation. And so, Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. And, Lord, be with the people. Use them to be a witness for you. And I thank you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Hope to see you tomorrow evening at 6.30, same place here in my office. And, uh, and as always, we invite you to join us on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock at Mountain Harvest Church over here. Uh, we sit, we're located right here at the property. So, And if you ever have questions, feel free to message me, call me, whatever. And I will try to answer your questions with the Word of God and help you out the way God would want. And so, God bless. Have a wonderful night and a great tomorrow. In Jesus' name.